<laughs> that would be me. <laughs> yes. I make no secret of the fact that my favorite musician of all time is Ronnie James Dio. <laughs> yes. And, like anyone else, when I develop favor over something or someone, I want to know and hear all there is that someone has to offer. <laughs> so, of course, over the course of years, I went out of my way to procure his whole discography, all of his studio albums as the Dio Band, and his albums in Black Sabbath, and his time all the way back in Rainbow and Elf and before. <laughs> but, of course, when you come across somebody who has a 40-plus year musical career, there are bound to be some extras that you might not necessarily just find on the albums themselves. So, what I want to take you through today is uh, a bit of my collection of albums that are not Dio albums, not Ronnie-centric, that he happened to have a rare random track on. <laughs> Here's how deep the rabbit hole really does go. <laughs> are you ready? So first, we're going to start with a few uh, covers that he did of some classic songs. First is the tribute album to Aerosmith, and he does a lovely version of Dream On. <laughs> yes, I could not have picked a better artist out of all the artists on here, and there are some amazing ones, but they put him in just the right place for that, because, I mean, that may well be... Aerosmith's most famously uh, solemn, uh, contemplative type song, and Ronnie fits right in with that. So yes, <laughs> I bought this Aerosmith tribute album largely for the Ronnie James Dio cameo. Speaking of tribute albums, here's Humanary Stew, the tribute to Alice Cooper, and he does a wonderfully creepy version of Welcome to my nightmare. <laughs> so wonderful is it that I frequently employ this version to help prepare myself for uh, these video shoots. <laughs> it is good to have a little bit of uh, audio uh, encouragement when diving right into some monster madness. <laughs> so yes, his version of Welcome to my nightmare, his wailing voice, and he has such a way of changing things up with some yells and some screams. <laughs> a great rendition there. Next is a cover of a song that debuts on the very same album. This is actually the band Girl School, a new way of a British heavy metal band, Girl School. <laughs> and they did their own song called uh, I Spy, which is all about Big Brother. And on the same album as a bonus track, uh, they actually bring in Ronnie James Dio to sing the very same song. Furthermore, he brings with him Tony Iommi. So right on this wonderful Girl School album is almost a hidden uh, Black Sabbath uh, track. <laughs> Amazing stuff. So there is that. And now, we get into some non-cover, some really random stuff. <laughs> Here is the soundtrack to the 80s film Iron Eagle. <laughs> Filled with some delightfully synth-happy, somewhat cheesy 80s music. And right in the middle of all this, there is Hide in the Rainbow by Dio. <laughs> because if it is in the 80s and Rainbow is in the title, odds are... Ronnie was singing it. <laughs> but yes, this is an amazing song. It makes uh, creative use of synthesizers here, creating this sort of synth kind of uh, tempo behind it. Um, but yeah, it's a soaring, fun, anthemic song. <laughs> I got that entire soundtrack just for that song. <laughs> Even though Queen's One Vision is also amazing on there. <laughs> Lastly... We have a track from the 70s. This is actually just in between Ronnie's time in, in Rainbow and Black Sabbath. He did a guest spot, actually two guest spots, two songs, 
with uh, Carrie Livgren. And this album is called Seeds of Change. And on this album, he actually does two tracks. One is called The Mask of the Great Deceiver. I'll let you guess who that might be talking about. And he also does a song called To Live for the King. And if you're in the mood for some uh, uplifting, inspirational, spiritual music, <laughs> that is the song for you. Oh, no one had any real idea just how dark uh, a turn Ronnie was about to get coming off of this album. <laughs> so yes, those are just a few samplings of sort of random hidden Dio tracks and songs. There are more. He has guest spots on uh, an Ian Gillen, uh, it was a uh, Gillen's Inn album, as well as, uh, humorously enough, he does a backing track on uh, a cover of Holy Diver by Pat Boone. <laughs> However, those two tracks, he really only plays a backing role, and I would not consider those albums uh, worthwhile just for <laughs> Ronnie Dio's sake. Not to say that those albums are not entertaining in, in themselves, but not for these purposes. <laughs> so, do you know of any other hidden Ronnie James Dio uh, songs that I am not aware of? I am aware of the song he did with The Rods, called The Code, uh, that is one of the few that has yet to uh, come within my grasp. But let me know if there are any more that I might have missed. And how about you? Who is your favorite musician? And what are some deep tracks that you went out of your way to hunt for? <laughs> let me know. Stay monstrous and stay metal. This just in. There has been another sighting of giant octopus. Back in my video, Arms and Legs, I mentioned there was a trilogy. However, I was wrong. There is another entry in the Giant Octopus Saga. Episode 23 of Ultra Q, over with Super Eye Productions, uh, called Fury of the South Sea. Uh, here, we've learned that Giant Oct Octopus is apparently a native of Micronesia and is worshipped and protected by the locals of that island. So much like Kong on Skull Island and uh, Mothra on Birth Island or Infant Island, uh, it does appear that Giant Octopus is in fact a king. <laughs> now in this episode there are both uh, real octopi as well as puppets used and uh, to bring further proof that this is in fact the same character again uh, first of all, that puppet looks mysteriously a lot like the one f used in both uh, Frankenstein Conquers the World and War of the Gargantuas. But furthermore, this episode made its debut in 1966. 1966 was also the same year that War of the Gargantuas came out. So, odds are this giant creature made its debut over here and then finished up its life cycle in War of the Gargantuas. No word on whether the living octopus is the same octopus or not. My guess is that it is not, but considering how close together the two were, odds are that they were related. So yes, giant octopus has been spotted again, this time over in Ultra Q. If you have not seen Ultra Q, give it a view. Welcome to the drawing challenge. <laughs> How about I give you a blast from the Comic-Con's past? <laughs> Today, how about I draw something from inside the recesses of my very own mind? That is right. Today, I'm going to use my dear old Magic Monster Maker. <laughs> yes. So, sorry little friend, you have to go down here. Do you remember how this works if you have seen me in person? All I need to do is give this a nice monster shake. <laughs> and then I peer inside and pull from within an egg. You see me not looking, just pulling. Ha! And whatever this egg tells me to draw, I must draw. See this little piece of paper? And it says... Uh-oh. 
Least favorite food. Ugh. Whatever could be my least favorite food. Ugh. What a disaster that might be. Especially if I have to finish by eating the paper. Oh, I know. I know what one of my least favorite foods is. Evil grapes. Better known as olives. <laughs> that is right. You're going to get an olive monster right here, right now. <laughs> okay, let me begin my construction of this evil grape monster. <laughs> let me see here. So what are your feelings on olives? <laughs> are they also evil grapes in your humble opinion? Have they ever terrorized your taste buds? Or do you find them delectable, delicious, with their strange, briny <laughs> uh, flavor profile? The weird thing about me is, okay, so I do not like olives. That probably is not so strange. But what you may be surprised by is, as much as I completely do not like olives, I cannot go without having extra virgin olive oil in my kitchen. Which, if you do or not do not know, Extra virgin olive oil is sort of the most pure olive tasting olive oil used for cooking. Not necessarily to fry in or anything like that, but, but it is used because of its sort of intense uh, flavor. Figure that out. <laughs> I do not like olives and yet I require uh, that sort of olive uh, after product. Hmm. All right, this is going to get interesting. I am just going to make a bunch of sort of smaller olives with hidden pits. Hmm. And you know what? Here, I'm going to go this route. I am not entirely certain what olive branches look like but that is what I'm going to create kind of for feet here this sort of gnarled tree trunk like sort of winding branches the other thing about me with olives is even though I do not like to eat them I will acknowledge that so many of them are quite lovely to look at. I have often enjoyed going into uh, Italian delis and, 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 gro and small Italian grocery stores which often had uh, fresh sort of olive bars, you know, stocked with all sorts of olives with all sorts of interesting colors. Not, not just the classic red, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not just the classic uh, sort of pale green or black but also red olives. I seem to recall there being blue and purple olives, uh, all sorts of strange, you know, speckled olives. And uh, while I, I, I could never bring myself to purchase any, I certainly appreciated the, the beauty of, of, of the way they looked. And to be fair, to give sort of the, uh, <laughs> the good lesson out of all this, I have not entirely given up on olives. I, I, I will not say that there is no dish out there with olives in it that I could ever uh, ingest. And I believe I actually have had a few dishes with olives that were tolerable, at least to me. Uh, perhaps a pasta dish here or there. Um, but I always say sometimes the reason you do not like a certain food is just because you have not had it the right way yet. You know, sometimes... You know, there have been times when I've been turned on to foods that I previously did not like. And, uh, 
learn to love them ever more after that. I am going to give them all the classic red pits. One of those pimentos. Makes you wonder who started doing the pimento tradition, huh? Who, who saw the little hole in the olive and decided something little and red needs to go in there. So it looks like a little red eye. <laughs> Makes you wonder what other things might have been shoved in there to give other uh, visual representations before the, the red pimento was, was finalized. All right, so we'll go with a classic green olive up here. And I'm going to go with, you know what? Just because I think I've seen them and I may, oh, no, 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 no. I was going to do purple because I like purple. I'm going to do a blue olive. Ooh. I've seen blue olives before. Have any of you seen blue olives? If you have, can you tell me what kind of olive they actually are But besides just color blue? I know different versions of things usually have more specific names than that. So blue. And then I'm going to do the traditional black over here. Mostly black. It's looking a little alien, is it not? <laughs> Maybe that is the true origin of, of uh, olives. They're, they're actually aliens that came down centuries ago and, and hid themselves, disguised themselves as ordinary, delicious looking fruit. So perhaps my taste buds do not lie after all. <laughs> all right, and now I'm going to use a darker green just for some contrast. And do a rough job with these guys. And then, last but not least, I'm going to add a little bit of orange to these branches down below. I know branches tend not to be orange, but just wait. I have, I have a trick here. There, so you can see that a little bit better. Are you ready? You ready for the trick? Hopefully it works. I'm going to go to the recesses of my belt for what should be a fairly, there we go. Get a nice dying marker. Okay. It's not quite giving me the, the brown hue I was hoping for. So maybe this is just a uh, <laughs> a charred olive branch. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to use your ima imagination and go with what you are given, huh? Go with what you have. As long as we're having fun and growing and learning and staying monstrous. <laughs> and that, my monster fans, is my... Olive Monster. So, what do you say? Is this a sufficiently uh, disgusting looking monster? <laughs> I know I would not want to eat it. Oh, the evil grape monster. <laughs> I think I would olive it alone. <laughs> well, let me just put that down along with my bad jokes. <laughs> well, I hope you have enjoyed this video entire. If you have, please do click on the like button and subscribe, as well as tolling that bell. 
And also, keep in mind that I do have a Patreon to which you can subscribe. <laughs> so, until next time, stay monstrous! Rawr.